Hi, my name is Liz McCauley. I'm a third year vet student here at Texas A&M. Um, I am interested in small animal medicine and um, exotic animal medicine as well. Um, some gerbils and hamsters um, and birds. Um, and I am really excited to show you today how to wrap a surgery bag. Student counts all instruments, gauze sponges, suture needles, and other material prior to loading the pack. All right, so I'm counting the instruments to make sure I know how many I have in my pack um, so that when I'm finished with surgery, I can ensure that um, no instruments have been left inside the patient. And then my gauze sponges. Gauze sponges are an item that has commonly been left behind in patients and can cause really bad issues. So you want to pick each one up and count it individually. Student places instruments from largest to smallest with the curves pointing in the same direction onto the pack wraps. Alright, so first I'm just going to cover my tray um, with a soft cloth or a drape. And then place the instruments from largest to smallest. And I'm also making sure that all of the box lock instruments are open. And that all the curved tipped instruments are facing the same direction. So if I had a, a smaller pack with fewer instruments, um, I would loop my scalpel handle through the rings of the instruments. But since I have quite a few instruments here today, I'm just going to collect my forceps and my scalpel handles and put them neatly in one corner of my tray. And also, if I had a spay hook, I would use a spay hook, which is longer, um, to loop through these instruments. Next, I'm going to place my towel clamps. These are the, the um, instruments with the sharp um, little hooks here. And I'm going to take them and neatly place them in this other corner of the tray. Um, next, I'm going to take my needles and put them in a space here so they all fit nicely. Next, I'm going to collect my sponges or gauze pieces and arrange them like this. And then with a drape towel, which looks like this, you want to accordion fold it. So the way you accordion fold it is you take it like this and then you fold it over like that. So just like an accordion. Like that. And then fold it like an accordion again to fit like that. And then you can place that neatly like this. And I have two more drapes here that I'm going to add in like this. And next, 
Um, and this is a really important step to remember. You want to place an indicator strip anytime you are going to go sterilize a surgery pack to make sure that the inside of the pack really did reach the correct temperature so that everything is properly sterilized. So you can pretty much bury that deep in the pack to make sure that um, steam got through the whole pack. And next, I'm going to unfold my largest drape. Here. And I'm going to do a diagonal fold. So I'm going to put the tray in the center of the diamond, like this. And then I'm going to fold up the bottom piece like this and give it a tug so that tray is firmly at the base. And then I fold the corner like this. And so you always want the corners facing the outside so that when someone goes to unwrap the pack, they don't have to reach over and contaminate the field. So next, I take this side, and again, with every fold you make, you want to make sure that it's taut so it will fold up nicely for you. And then again, ensuring that my corners are always facing the outside edges. Other corner here. And then lastly, your um, last corner is going to be facing away from you. Um, and it's going to be folded kind of like an envelope. So you bring that towards you. And you'll see there's a nice um, pocket here for you to push this material into that pocket. And you will be left with a little flap and the last corner, see, always facing out, that the person that's unwrapping the pack can pull out and nicely unfold your um, surgery pack. So the final step um, is to place one more layer of drape, your smaller drape, on the outside. And it's the same process over again, but this is just a smaller piece of fabric. So it can be tricky. Um, but if you just make sure that you're pulling everything taut, you should be able to get a nice um, wrap there for you. So again, pulling my corner up. Pushing to make sure everything is taut. Having my corner face the outside. And this may take a few tries. Um, don't get frustrated if you don't get it right on the first time. Um, I still sometimes have to go back and uh, rewrap my, my packs because they weren't tight enough. But it's the same, same concept for the, the last straight. All right. Lastly, you want to make sure that you put just some regular masking tape on the outside, and that normally gets labeled with uh, the contents and the date and the initials of the person who wrapped it. And then you take a piece of autoclave tape. It doesn't have to be a large piece, um, just so that you can see the indicator strips there. Um, and you place that. I often place it on the corner of my masking tape. And that is just another Another way to show that the pack has been autoclaved and has gone through a, a heat um, sterilization. So how would you know it's been autoclaved from that tape? Okay, so this tape, um, if you'll notice, uh, this is kind of old tape, but the tape, um, the stripes on the tape will be lighter um, before it's autoclaved. 
and then once it's autoclave, those strips will turn black. And that tells you that it's been autoclaved. And then once you open the inside of the pack, that indicator strip is just another step to make sure that the inside of the pack got enough heat to be sterile. And you'll know that because it's black too, or what? Yes, um, it depends on the strips that you use. Um, some turn purple um, and some turn black, but usually they will, have, um, they will have a little legend on the strip that lets you know if it is um, sufficiently uh, autoclaved. So if you'll notice, when I was arranging my instruments, I kept the like instruments together, so I had all my scissors together, all of my hemostats together, um, and that is done for the purpose of having things in an arranged order so that when I do open the pack and I get into the operating room, I have, uh, you know, I know where things are and they're in an orderly fashion. Um, and so that is another reason why you want to make sure that you wrap, um, that you wrap the surgery pack tightly um, so that things don't get moved around in there. Um, another reason that it's important to wrap your surgery pack tightly and have these two outer um, layers of drapes uh, is to prevent any um, bacteria or other contaminants from entering your surgical pack once it is sterilized.